get the best in romance. Too scared to stand there by myself. And don't expect thought-provoking drama. Don't get killed. You too. But what we can promise is fully loaded action. Are you gonna kill him? Not right now. Maybe later. Tanked up with high octane, high fives, and heroes. I'm not gonna shoot till they shoot at us, partner. It's like one of those video games. You just defeated the first wave. To teach you how to kick some serious. So learn from the masters. Dolph Lundgren. You won't see me coming. And Brandon Lee. Oh, that's perfect. Star in Showdown in Little Tokyo. Hey guys, I'm Speaking Vacations. And welcome to my review of Showdown in Little Tokyo. And, uh, you know, this is, in my opinion, a really underrated action flick. Now, I've heard people talk about this movie. Um, it gets a 5.6 out of 10 on IMDb, which isn't too bad. Um, still doesn't get the 8.9 that the fucking Dark Knight gets. Alright, I'm just gonna go on a quick rant about this shit. The fucking Dark Knight is the highest rated fucking action movie on fucking IMDb. How many fucking action sequences in that fucking movie are any fucking good? Or are or nearly even close to being as fucking badass as any action sequences in this? None. Because that movie isn't a fucking action movie. It's a goddamn fucking boring excuse of a crime drama which tries to be so fucking serious, it's fucking stupid. And I'll get into that later. Someday, down the road. Probably leading up to the release of The Dark Knight Rises. So anyway, getting off that tangent, more into this fun movie, which I can't believe the deal I got on this DVD. I found it at the Value Village, and it was on and the tag. That, see this tag? It's a silver tag. Three bucks, you know, in itself is a really good deal. But what I ended up paying for it, I only ended up paying, I think, maybe two bucks or a dollar because it was half off. Fucking badass deal. Now, I watched this for the first time in a while on my new, our family's brand new flat 42-inch flat screen in a Blu-ray player. Yes, I have a Blu-ray player now, folks. I wasn't my decision. I had considered buying one, but you know, I never found one that was really affordable, and the ones that I would find didn't have a remote, so I didn't really want to go for that. But this one, I gotta be honest, okay, I had not bought any Blu-rays yet, I'm contemplating buying the Expendables for the documentary, um, or Kick-Ass for the documentaries and that, um, but I really honestly... You know, in the new Jaws Blu-ray that's going to come out sometime with the Shark is Still Not Working documentary. I'll probably buy that sometime just because of that documentary. Because I want to see that. And Jaws is probably a cool Blu-ray. But anyway, it's not like I'm automatically being like, yes, I'm going to go all Bill all in on Blu-ray. Even my mom's friend Troy, he's all like, I don't like Blu-ray. You know, I only got it because, you know, it was it came with the speakers that we want or something. <laughs> it's just fucking... It was basically the only thing was left with speakers because Best Buy was going out of business near me. So, they were basically going over there. And I was surprised. It was like they actually went and bought all this stuff. I was like, wow. So, anyway, what that TV does, it actually what it did is it took this full screen DVD and sort of made it look widescreen. No, it was like a big zoomed in sort of widescreen, sort of like, you know, um, but yeah, basically made it widescreen, basically. And it looked fucking fantastic. The Blu-ray player, I don't know if it was the Blu-ray or or if it was uh, the actual Blu-ray or if it was just the TV, but it looked fucking great on the flat screen. It was just a lot of fucking, it looked fantastic. So the picture quality was so fucking natural, it was unbelievable. So anyway, off that, you know, getting off the tangent there, I mean, just this movie is just a lot of fun. It's just a fucking balls to the wall, testosterone fueled, you know, non-stop, you know, action packed through a ride, you know, that lasts about 78 minutes. This movie's only 78 minutes long. 
And, you know, it just goes by like wildfire. And it's just, you know, it's just extremely entertaining. These two leads here, Randolph Hunger and Brandon Lee, you know, maybe Brandon Lee, rest in peace, have such great chemistry in this. It's just, you would just, I could watch fucking 10 hours of these guys, you know, you know, hanging out together and having fun. So, basically, basically, you know, it kind of is like, kind of like the, it is directed by Marco Lester, director of Commando, and it stars, you know, Dolph Lundgren as Detective Kenner, Brandon Lee as uh, Johnny Barada, and uh, it actually has Kerry Haruki Tagawa as a bad guy, the evil, ruthless leader of the Yakuza, Tanaka. And it also has a young uh, Tia Carrera who is just looking spankable as ever in here. And uh, it also, you know, you know, it also stars, uh, in all honesty, I think his name is Toshiro Obata. I think that's the actor's name. And uh, it's got Simon Rhee in this who was also in a few other movies. It's Toshiro Obata who plays Sato. And... Uh, Oh, he's not Tanaka. His name is Kiraki Hotokawa. His name is Yoshida. Okay, I got the two mixed up. Sounds better, though. You know, Tanaka is the one guy in the beginning. So, anyway, basically, you no, know, uh, Toshiro Obata, who plays Seto in this, I just call him, I just call him, uh, fucking, uh, I call him, uh, Tatsu, anyway. I mean, this is the actor who played Tatsu in the first two Turtles films, and that's. That's I, that's all I remember him as, and so every time I see this actor, I'm just like, hey, it's Tatsu. I'm like, you know, I don't think Shredder's going to be very pleased that you left the foot and decided to join the Yakuza. So, so anyway, you basically, the whole plot is pretty fucking cut and dry. It's not fucking complicated at all. Um, the Yakuza is, is uh, basically, they've showed up in L.A. in little Tokyo. Headed by Yoshida, um, uh, Terry Gutagawa. He's bringing in his drugs and he, he basically brings them in under the cover of some beer company called the Red Dragon Beer Company. And so basically, he basically employs his own, you know, Yakuza brethren. And he also tries to employ some of the LA, you know, gangs. And one of the guys, he is a motorcycle gang guy. He's like, what do you mean we did? You know, he starts talking shit and, uh, Basically, Yoshida just cuts off his fucking arm, and he's all like, No, you have only one hand to wipe your ass with. It's just like... It's like, ah! You agree with me? It's like, yeah! It's, ah. it's, just, it's, just, it's just fucking gorgeous. It, it's, it's cheesy. This is a cheesy movie, but it's a lot of fun, though. And, and, and on the back of the DVD, it says, like, a comic book come to life, and I do agree with that. And it does definitely remind you of Double Dragon, the video game. And, you know, because Double Dragon, the video game, this is more likely what it, what the video game is like. I mean, I mean, you could probably put the title Double Dragon on here and it could be freaking Double Dragon, the movie. You know, I don't, none of this mystical medallion shit and the Shadow Warriors and I think I fucking blame the cartoon, Double Dragon cartoon for that because I had the Shadow King as a villain in those red and blue jumpsuits. But... Anyway, I mean, that's why I made that trailer, because this does feel like a Double Dragon movie. You know, this movie feels more like a Double Dragon movie than the actual Double Dragon movie that we got. And, uh, of course, it also has a really good score by David Michael Frank, who's so great with these action movies. Best of the Best, Best of the Best 2, you know, uh, Street Night. This guy's just, this guy's just really, he knows what he's doing with these action movie scores. So basically, you... The first half of the film, first part of it, is just Kenner. He comes in. He basically crashes some uh, kickboxing, you know, underground kickboxing ring. And there's this memorable little stuff. You know, this guy's like, kick his ass! Full clan on the new guy! That's a good bet. It's just that he just gets kicks ass, and it's just, it's just a lot of fun. And then he gets outnumbered by guys with guns, and then he gets away. And then he cuts to this little store, and... This woman and there's this guy Tanaka. He's basically threatening her and being a dick. And he's like, I don't know about the Yakuza being here. And then Kenner shows up and he's like drinking a cup of tea or whatever. He's like, you know, I haven't had my breakfast yet. 
And if I don't have my breakfast, I get real angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. I think that's what he said or something. Real irritated or something. And he just does this awesome, like, just mega punch to some guy. He just, like, he just turns around and goes, BAM! Just socks this guy in the face. And Kenner's just, just, you know, kicking these Yakuza guys' asses, you know. And then, of course, you know, t t uh, fucking Tatsu shows up with fucking machine guns and starts mowing down the place after, you know, he kicks some guy through a fucking window. And that's when Brandon Lee shows up. And Brandon Lee's all like, you know, he puts Jared Murata, he's all like, what the fuck? There's a fight going on. I go in there. And he goes in and is like, police, freeze! And it was the, this is a fun moment where he basically, you know, Dolph Lundgren and him both turn their guns on each other. And, you know, that's how they meet each other. You know, before they're about to shoot each other, basically. And then, you know, they have a little bromance. <laughs> I mean, it really is a bromance. But it's, it's I, got, I, I can't really say I don't like bromances in these type of movies. Because that's really what you're expecting is, you know, them to have a lot of fun, you know, good, good stuff going on here. So then, you know, basically there's a guy, they have these guns here, and he's all like a cop, you know, Brandon Lee's like, cop, policeman, understand? It's bad to shoot me. He's a cop too. It's bad to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying, I'm trying to uh, uh, find the <laughs> So they're like fighting, you know, and you know, basically what they do is they sort of try to get into you know, Johnny Marta tries to go after, you know, go arm bar or something on uh, Chris, you know, Kenner. And he's all like, you know, you know, all that upper body strength really slows you down. I'm not slow. You didn't hit me. If I did, you wouldn't be here. Not arguing, but you didn't. <laughs> so they have that moment just right off the bat. It's just it's The chemistry is just automatic. You just It's just like... As soon as the two start, you know, being on the screen at the same time, it's just automatic, you know, chemistry, and it's just sparks fly, I guess, and it's just a joy to watch these two. So then, basically, goes to the police station, talks to some guy. He, um, Kenner sees that the Yakuza tattoo on him, and this is actually, I think it's around the same time, but I'll just see. It basically, has the you see it has a flashback to when he was a kid, and I guess uh, Yoshida. Tagawa brutally murdered his parents in front of him. And the fact that he was able to, you know, you know, be able to basically come back from that and become a cop, that's inspirational. That's, that's pretty, you know, you know, that's, I mean, it's pretty amazing. I mean, because that's really traumatic. And for a kid to basically, you know, live with that and find a way to live with that is really, really, you know, I don't know if it would say amazing, but it's definitely, definitely, um, what word am I trying to use? <laughs> uh, it's definitely impressive. So basically, he then he, he grabs this guy and he tells him, where's the Yakuza, you know? And, and uh, fucking... And, of course, Kenner's like, what are you doing? You know, because it, basically it's like, we can't... Okay, I'm trying to find it. Because that's perfect. A partner with a homicidal maniac on a personal vendetta of family vengeance. <laughs> Which is, it's cool. Kenner's going for revenge. and that, You add the revenge subplot in there too. It's really nice. So anyway, uh, uh, Yoshida goes fucking apeshit crazy and decapitates uh, one of his girlfriend's angel who happens to be a friend of uh, Tia Carrera who's a lounge singer in uh, one of these, in the some sushi club. Where Kenner and uh, Murata end up heading over to. And of course that's the one where they go into the club. And